Hey creators, welcome back to Creator Best Life for a brand new video. I'm Kimani and I'm so excited today per usual because this is our first review of 2024. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the project that I am reviewing as well as giving you my reading list and my watch list for 2024. Now, this is a fluid reading and watch list. So as the months go on and as I knock off different books that I read, I'm going to be recycling and adding more things throughout the year. So if you like videos like this and you enjoy reviews and hearing about other people's reading and watch lists, please give me a thumbs up. Please hit the notification bell so you're alerted every single time I post a brand new video, share with a friend, and most importantly, hit the subscribe button so you let me know that you're having a good time here and I'm doing a good job. Just keep watching. Okay, you guys already know I'm beating a dead horse here, but I have my film and TV journal, which I love, totally obsessed with, and I write in this thing every single time I watch a TV show or movie. So if you want one of these, I highly, highly recommend. They also create reading journals and they also have a bunch of different other ones. I think they have travel journals and just a regular writing your thoughts down journal but if you want one of these it is linked down below in my amazon storefront so let me know if you get one okay let's talk about this review first i'm super geeked about this project mostly because it was written created by one of my very good friends i've known her since high school and we reconnected after we both graduated college and realized we both were you know studying interested in filmmaking which has been amazing and so not only did she write and create the not only did she write and create the project but she also acted in it and I am so elated to talk about this project because I told you guys last year that I wanted to work on reviewing and watching more indie films and because this project is now on Open TV which is a platform that was founded in Chicago for black and brown intersectional LGBTQ people in the community who have created short films, TV shows, pilots, the like. This project is entitled Bermuda. What is this? Where are you going? Nowhere. I was... Tommy, I hope you are not planning any vacation. You have a responsibility over here. Be realistic. Let me give you the log line. On the evening of her 25th birthday, Tommy Adebiyi is surrounded by half-packed suitcases in a frantic attempt to book a one-way ticket to the island of Bermuda. An all too familiar interruption from her hysterical praying mother and proverb reciting uncle serves as a frightening preview for what's to come for life in her adulthood, unless she can escape. Okay, now we're gonna open our film and TV journal because I took notes. Okay, so, so this is a drama, I'm calling it comedic drama because that's more so what she writes. She loves stories about faith and God and religion and stories starring and about black and brown people, particularly Nigerian people, because she's of Nigerian descent. And let me tell you guys, this project was a labor of love because she started this project years ago. And as of fall 2023, which was a few months ago, the past few months, I should say, it is officially online. So this was from 2021. I remember I was so excited to read the script. It was great and I'm glad that she finally got it done. But let me tell you guys about some of the players in the film. It was directed by Lorenzo Leyva and it's starring Jasmine Ogunjimi as Tomi, Brittany Williams as her best friend Cameron, Joshua Turner as her other best friend Wilson, Mrs. Mary Ogunjimi as mom, Edward Nikwei as Uncle Femi, Ryan McGill as Dorian, and Mike Jones as the bartender. Okay, so here are my general thoughts. Overall, I thoroughly enjoyed this film and I know that it can be a little bit biased because I read the script years ago and then this is one of my closest friends. However, the film is so heartfelt and just a joy to watch that it shouldn't matter my relation to it at all. Some of the elements that it had that I have been so excited and looking for have been black and brown leads, specifically darker skin leads because for one, if you throw a black person on the screen, sure, they can be any complexion, but representation matters. And oftentimes we do not see characters that look like myself or darker. So especially in a romantic relationship or where the young woman who happens to be dark skin is being written as desirable, specifically by black men. It also includes elements of friendship and acute misunderstanding. And I know that 
when characters have like this dynamic where it's this misunderstanding that kind of changes the the that kind of changes the course of the story and it makes it so that that is like the main conflict essentially um i know that people don't like that it's a bit overused i should say and people other people think that as well however i think that this was done in such a cute way where you weren't left feeling like oh they did it again you know so our main character, Tomi, she embodies this rebellious spirit that so many of us creative people possess. She wishes to pursue art instead of a doctorate, doctorate degree. Well, really a medical degree. That's what she is set to pursue. And that's what her family wants her to pursue because she comes from this royal family. And she has really no interest in being defined by any young man because her family wants her to be married off to somebody who has an 820 credit score, nor by her family's wishes or cultural norms because it's normal for in that culture and a lot of cultures to, you know, not necessarily marry up. I, I guess that's for most cultures to marry up or marry someone that's on your, um, you know, level in terms of socioeconomic status in society. Um, and that's why her mom is pushing like the 820 credit score. Uh, this guy is probably African and or I should say more specifically Nigerian and culturally they make sense because they understand each other's cultures. It's a um, shared, it's a shared bond that they would have, but that's not the life that she wants. One thing that I loved was that her mom, uncle, and closest friends provide really colorful commentary and comedic relief to the inner turmoil of people pleasing that Tomi experiences. And I really can say as a woman, it is hard to overcome people pleasing, the nature of people pleasing. It's hard to be afraid of not measuring up to people's expectations of you or feeling like you are letting someone down or hurting their feelings. And you have to get to a point where you realize this is my life and this is not yours and I should be able to pursue it. Like, come on, this girl is 25. She is a grown woman at this point. I mean, she is living at home. She's living under their roof. However, at this point, it's like, if I'm not going to live for me, when am I going to live for me? You know? So with that said, I think that this story is a great reminder for people my age. I'm 29. I'm going to be 30 this year. And especially for people younger than me, this is a great reminder that we should live for ourselves and pursue what brings us joy. Because at the end of the day, when you get to the last days of your life, the only thing you are going to regret is most likely how you treated people and how you lived your life. Did you regret not doing the things that you were excited about that you probably should have done? Another topic of discussion in this short film has been sexuality in the sense of our main character has not had sex before ever and she's 25 and her friends are really pushing her to have sex for the first time with her boyfriend Dorian. Her mom and her uncle are pushing her to get married so that's you know most likely going to be a sexual relationship. Not everyone's is, but odds are. And then on top of that, she, like I said, is a virgin. And that's a whole relationship within itself where you feel like, should I do it just because everyone else is, says that they're doing it? Because not everyone that says that they're doing it is. But also, should I do it because I want to? And then you bring in the religious aspects because these people are obviously praying people of Christian faith and so that's another element that you have to consider for people that do practice that that is a very hot topic of discussion and then it's like am I bad for doing it should I not do it then should I just go pack up everything forget everybody and go on this trip and this is her last dime like she was willing to spend her last dime on these plane tickets so what I loved about the topic of sexuality in this story was that it's also an important dialogue about how intimacy does not equate to physical sex. You can find intimate ways to interact with people, even on platonic levels, by bonding with them, getting to know them, sharing tasks and activities, sharing different things that you guys enjoy together. You might like the same movies. You might bond over playing games. You might bond over hiking. It's so many different ways to build intimate relationships that don't even lead to sex at all, where you feel just as close to this person without 
without making it physical, unless you want to. But I love the idea that, again, talking about women and their bodies and choices, she has the choice to say, yes, I want to do this or no, I don't want to do this. All in all, I think that Bermuda gives us this 20 something fun, flirty experience as if we're like freshly turning 21 during our final year of college. So I would give it a five out of five stars just because I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I thought that it was well written, it was well done. I must talk about the lighting. The lighting was so freaking good. It's almost giving the way that Atlanta and Insecure had been lighting their characters because, because I must say everyone's skin was popping. They had blues and greens and pinks and it was just really good, especially the bar scenes. I think that when black people are lit in bar scenes within the last decade, it has just been really good. I have loved it every single time. I even have friends that light people and we did a bar scene recently and the lighting was just so freaking good. I was just, ah, love it so much. And I think that that's such a great way to utilize lighting in storytelling. It's just, I love it. And then for the bathroom scene. <sighs> Me. Of course, I've had sex before. I have sex all the time. <laughs> well, not, not all the time, it's like a lot. They switched out the lights for that as well and it gave a totally different vibe for how she was feeling and it gave us her inner thoughts and I just thought that it was a great way to bring in some comedic relief to this kind of heated moment as well. All of the actors were great, which I was pleasantly surprised was Tommy's mom, which is actually Jasmine, the creator's mom in real life and she was so freaking good. I loved it. I thought that it was so much fun. She did a phenomenal job. This film was both relatable and an escape. So definitely giving it a five out of five stars, highly recommend. So if you enjoy indie films, black filmmakers, female filmmakers, and Nigerian filmmakers, this is such a great option for you. Check it out on Open TV. I will link it below. And if you're tight for funds, which we are manifesting and praying for and working for abundance in joy, love, finances, make sure that you sign up for their free trial. I believe that you get 14 days and, you know, watch a few films on there, see how you like it. And then, you know, you're done. You don't have to pay for anymore. But if you would like to, go ahead and support Black and Brown LGBTQ creators. So hope you enjoy. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the reading and watch list for 2024 that I am excited to pursue. And I've got the list on my phone, so I'm gonna be reading from there. So shall we talk about books first? Yes, good answer. All right, my reading list for 2024 includes, which I started in 2023, but I only got through maybe like 60-ish pages, Legendborn, because I was super busy and then I was out of town and things happened. So reading Legendborn, and I believe they have a sequel. So I'm gonna read that. End of Story, which is a magical book. It's got elements of romance and I'm excited about that. Where Sleeping Girls Lie, the last one, which is a fantasy romance. To not be confused with the other last one books, this is by Rachel Hazel Hall. And it's another one that's a thriller, which probably will read that one too. The Appearance of Rachel Price, A Whisper of Poison, This Could Be Us, Shadow Sister, Immortal Longings, The Writing Retreat, Kiss and Spell. Now, some of these are romance. We can read it in February. We can read it in October, because that's when my anniversary is. I don't know. We can do it whenever. You can read it in the wintertime. Obviously, some of the thrillers can be read in the fall or any time, but specifically like September, October, November time. I think that that's great. And so far, this is what I have to read this year, which I'm super excited about. Now let's talk about the movies and TV shows. Obviously, top of the year, we've got the Mean Girls musical. I really wanna see that. I don't know if I'm gonna see it first thing or if I'm gonna wait until it comes out on streaming. We'll see, fingers crossed. That might be a solo date. Mm. Let's have a solo date, y'all. We're gonna bring the solo dates back for real this time. Um, the American Society of Magical Negroes. I think that that's gonna be a great project. I think that that's gonna be a great film to watch. Mickey 17, Deadpool 3, Say No More, A Quiet Place Day 1. And I believe that that might be the prequel, Shirley, about Shirley Chisholm, Wicked Part 1. I didn't realize that 
when they said Wicked was coming back out, I thought they meant that Cynthia Erivo was actually going to be like on Broadway, but it's actually a musical film. And all the actors are phenomenal. So I figured, why not? Let's just try it. The Fall Guy. I have a feeling that's going to be really good. There's the Joker sequel with Joaquin Phoenix. It's called Joker Foley Ado. Next is If, IF, or better known as Imaginary Friends. It's got Ryan Reynolds. So he's he's been pretty hot the past few years. Like ever since I feel like, actually he's always been working nonstop. Always. Since like the early 2000s, we've seen him in movies all the time. But since Deadpool came out, he's just been freaking everywhere. Um, good for him. I think that that's going to be a great film to watch fun for kids. Inside Out 2. I thought that that was good for adults and children. Like that, that was a good movie. So Matt and I can't wait to see that because we saw it in college when it came out. We got it on campus and I don't remember why it was on campus, but every now and again, they had movies that had just come out and we got to watch them on campus without having to go down into Lafayette to watch it at the movie theater in town. It ends with us. That's the Colleen Hoover book, I believe. I did not read those, but the movie sounds good and the creators are really good. And I think it has Blake Lively in it as well. So I'm interested. I don't know what to expect. Cause like I said, I never watched, uh, never read the book, but We'll see how it goes. Next is one of my favorites, Knives Out 3. I love that series. I will watch all of them. It does not matter. Next is Nosferatu. I watched the original. I love vampire movies, vampire books, vampire stories. It doesn't matter. I'm just obsessed with vampires and fantasy. So definitely will be watching that new version. It's a project called Lift. Now I read a bit about it. It's a comedy for Netflix by F. Gary Gray and it's got Kevin Hart in it. And as much as I admire Kevin Hart, I don't always like him in movies. It's like, I don't know what it is. I, I don't know if it's just, I feel like it's not super funny or what. He's just not my favorite in movie. Like, <laughs> he's a great comedian. I, I just don't like him in movies for some reason, unless it's like a think like a man type of movie. It, he's just more fun in those. I don't know why. But um, this is a comedy for Netflix. I think that... I should try it just because it sounds like it's going to be decent. It's a master thief is wooed by his ex-girlfriend and the FBI to pull off an impossible heist with his international crew on a 777 passenger flight from London to Zurich. And y'all know I love heist projects, heist films, heist books. I love heist. Um, criminal movies and TV shows are my jam. So I'm going to give it a try. I'll let you guys know if I do try it and if I enjoy it, just my overall thoughts. So keep an eye out for that. It's supposed to be coming out on the 12th, which is when this video is supposed to be coming out as well. So I've got another review to do for you guys, apparently. Next, the movie critic. I used to want to be a movie critic. I think that that's such a cool job. Basically, that's what I'm doing. This is a review. It's about <laughs> being a movie critic. Um, am I good at it? I don't know. That's up for debate. But uh, I think it's fun. It gives you, you know, some insight. You learn how to make movies better by watching movies and TV shows. So I'm gonna give that a try. A Different Man, that sounded good. Irish Wish as well, and Damsel. So that will conclude my reading and watch list for 2024, the very fluid list that I've got going. So as the months go on, I will keep you guys updated for what I add to my list because it is going to change. I know it is because it's always something new that comes out because also like Bridgerton is coming out. Y'all know that's on my list. I believe that you season five is coming out this year, obviously on my list. So I will keep you guys posted on all of the happenings and the reviews, but I'm so excited to be back. I just love this so freaking much and I hope that you guys enjoyed it as well. So if you did enjoy it, comment below and let me know which book or TV show or film you are most excited for for this year. I can't wait to discuss that with you guys and maybe I'll learn a few more things that I need to add to my list, you never know. And don't forget to give me a like, hit the share button, hit the notification bell so you're alerted every single time I post a brand new video and hit the subscribe button because I can't wait to have you join the fan. I am on the road to getting monetized. That is my plan to be sticking to this schedule. Discipline is one of my words for the year and so is abundance and so is reaping. So I need to get 
to my ish okay so i wish you guys a beautiful 2024 hope that you guys watch a ton of movies tv shows and consume a crap ton of art and as well as making a crap ton of art in your own free time hope this inspires you guys and i can't wait to talk to you guys in a brand new video bye Shh, stop it. what do you want to see hmm? <laughs>